First things first, I'm Jen Wolf. That's the Hall of Famer Chris Carter. You got it? Oh, he got it. I this got right it. here, this is our NBA guy, Nick Wright. Good morning, everybody. What's up? Nothing. I just, there's, Chris does something every morning that makes me laugh. It's the old, the gods, the gods flip a coin and we see how it comes up. A little inside joke from Chris and I'll tell you off the air in about 12 minutes after well, we talk about awkward is it that I'm right finals. here and I'm on the outside I have to say hi, a, a oh. hi to a friend, oh, of, a friend of the show. I was on the train, Metro North yesterday, going up to Greenwich. Guy watches the show every day in Israel. It's oh, wow. down. Huge fan of Jenna, Nick. Man, oh man, he likes the new hair and everything oh, too. I so like shout that. out to all our fans out there. We typically don't well, do it, but mm -hmm. hey, while well, we're doing it, I shout out to it. the guy who said something to me on the street of Harlem yesterday as I'm walking by. Nothing else other than, hey, how long you had that toupee? I can thank <laughs> you for that and being a it's part working. of my life. Thank you, America. Absolutely. Go ahead, right. General Wolf. With that, we are going to start <laughs> the aforementioned show. Uh, big one today. Baker Mayfield and OBJ gave us a preview of what we can expect in Cleveland. The Los Angeles Lakers could be back in the mix for Anthony Davis, okay. but only one place to start this show, and that's with the NBA Finals, which resumed tonight. Raptors, Warriors, all tied up at a game apiece for Golden State, a team that's become basically a walking mash unit of late. They'll be without Kevin Durant once again, despite wanting to play and ramping up his workouts. KD will not be ready in time for tonight's game. Still out with that strained calf. As for Klay Thompson and that strained hamstring, he will be a game time decision. Here's more now from Klay Thompson. Obviously, I'll do anything I can to be out there, it's, but it's all in their hands, and if there's any pain, it would be a no-go just because of the position we're in. Um, you know, this could be a longer series, so there's no point in trying to go out there and re-aggravate it and potentially keep myself out of the whole entire finals instead of just one game. Our team is very adaptable. We've got a lot of versatility. And um, what it requires is uh, bench players being ready to step up like they always are. And um, guys just playing hard and playing together. Nick, it doesn't look good for the Warriors at this point. If Clay is a game-time decision, KD is definitely out. You have no Kevon Looney at this point. How can the Warriors overcome their injuries tonight? Well, if Clay doesn't go, it would take a Herculean Steph Curry, Draymond Green performance. Mm -hmm. It would be, it, if Clay does not play, given the fact that KD's out and has a secondary storyline, Kevon Looney's out, it would be, to me, one of the greatest wins in this five-year run for this franchise. If they can win this game with no Clay and no Durant against a defense that good, and I've been pretty adamant that I think Clay's going to find a way to play, and that if he doesn't, they I don't see their path to victory. But Clay's comments there alarmed me. If you think he's going to play, I asked you this morning: Is there anything you can do for a hamstring as far as to address the pain? We know with a sprained ankle, they can do either they can do some cortisone or some type of medication mm -hmm. to where you can numb it to a degree. And you said they would never do that for a strained hamstring because you then risk tearing it. You then yes. risk further injury. And for Clay to say, if there's pain, it's a no-go. Not if there's pain, I'll see if I can gut through it. Not if there's pain, I'll see, I'll see how I feel in warm-ups. That, to me, is probably the reason why all of a sudden last night the Warriors went from five-and-a-half-point favorites in Vegas to down to four-point favorites and now back up to four-and-a-half. Like, Vegas heard that KD was out, but they expected KD to be out, then heard what Clay had to say, and that drastically hurts the Warriors' chances if he's feeling tender or pain that he thinks he won't be able to go. Because, see, with the hamstring, you could probably do more damage to it if you try to fight through that pain as opposed to the ankle. Am I right? Yeah, and a lot of people are looking at game three. Clay started looking at, at, at beyond in the series. But one thing, Jenna, that you thought was important was, man, you get an injury like this, they're going to play three games in five days. Now, they've had, a long, they've had three days off and everything. They're going to play tonight. But... The actuality is they got three games in five days, and the ability to be able to play without pain, I think he's not going to be able to do that. So I don't think he's going to be able to play tonight. It does put a lot of pressure on the Warriors for game number four. But if you look at what's the best for the Warriors, this is a series. This is not the Super Bowl. This is not NFC, AFC championship game where you're going to have two weeks off. No, you're still in a series that is tied up. There is no cushion. There is no room for a team to be reckless at this point in the series. Just so people understand the schedule, they play tonight, off tomorrow, and then play Friday. That's the only stretch in the series where they only have one day off. Then they'll be off the whole weekend and play back in 
Toronto for game five on Monday. So between now and Monday, those are those three games Chris is talking about. I look at that, though, almost from a slightly different perspective in this regard. Kevin Durant, I don't think you can circle game four for him anymore. Nope. See, he hasn't practiced yet. <laughs> They're going to practice tomorrow. That's going to be a light practice. When you only when it's the, they play today, they play Friday. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a light practice. Kerr had already said, I guess it's feasible that KD could play after just one practice. So game five to me is now the earliest you could see Kevin Durant. So there's one way to say, yeah, it's going to be a long series. Another way to look at it is it could be a short series if the Warriors don't win tonight. If they so the, the idea of we want to save Clay, we want to be cautious with Clay. If you don't think you're going to have Kevin Durant for a game four, and you know you're not going to have Looney, and we don't know how Boogie's going to respond to the increased workload he's going to need tonight with Looney out, you lose tonight, all of a sudden you are facing, in my mind, a must-win game in game four, even though we've seen the Warriors once come back from 3-1 down in the conference finals. That's a position only 11 teams in NBA history have come back down, down 3-1 in any series. So I... Tonight's game does become a critical game, and for them to win without Klay Thompson, if they have to do that, I mentioned Steph and Draymond, Draymond. Boogie also will have to not only duplicate what he did in game two, but do it on an even higher level. Well, let's be realistic. They're going to have to find points. Klay mm -hmm. and Duran have combined to average 50 points this postseason. Where are you going to find that production from if Steph doesn't have a monster night, which he hasn't had yet so far this series? Quinn Cook's got to build a score in double figures. He's a great shooter of the basketball. He's their best shooter coming off. Off the bench but you're awful small and you're giving up a lot on the defensive end so that offensive output that we're missing from clay draymond's gonna have to take over a little more just like he did when kd went out iggy i know iggy is going to do what he's got to do on the defensive end but he's got to build score in double figures they have to be have four players to build score in double figures who's going to be those guys that's what's going to play out they get four guys in double figures they can pull off the tremendous win at home tonight if Nick. clay doesn't play then all of a sudden boogie and his minutes will feel much more at home in this regard they will run post-ups for boogie for boogie cousins something that they that he has mm -hmm. always loved he wanted that in sacramento and he got it he wanted wanted it in New Orleans, he got it to a degree. With Golden State, he knew he wasn't going to get as much of it. But that is, compared to a regular Warriors offense, that's an inefficient possession. Compared to a Quinn Cook, Alfonso McKinney, Andre Iguodala Warriors offense, that would be a good possession. Boogie will get a lot of touches if Clay can't go. Look for Toronto also. If Quinn Cook and, and Steph play a lot of minutes together, it's not something they did a lot during the regular season. Look for Toronto to try to get back out on the fast break, which they were able to do in game number one, because defensively, you have guards displaced. Steph, if he's trying to be off the ball in that box and one defense they're playing, yeah. who's going to be back on defense all the time? Quinn Cook is not used to that responsibility and being disciplined at it, so I look for Nick Nurse and that coaching staff. Let's get back to game number one. Let's speed up this pace. Try to get some good looks early in the shot clock compared to what we did in game number two. All right, good stuff. We'll talk a lot more about this game coming up. We got some football to discuss. Guess who showed up to Brown's mini camp this year? We'll talk about their chances as potential Super Bowl contenders next on FS1. You can always check us out on the Fox Sports Channel on Sirius XM. We'll be right back.